There we go. All right. Maddie, hello. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. How are great. you doing? I'm doing all right. <laughs> I, I, I just want to sleep all day, but it's not possible. <laughs> really not. And you think it would be like right now, but it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not. I woke up at like 3.30 in the morning and I was like, why? <laughs> <laughs> you do seem to keep very strange uh, sleeping hours. <laughs> I try, no, I try to go to bed by midnight and wake up by between five and seven. Like that's always the goal. <laughs> Because if I sleep too much, I actually have really bad anxiety dreams. So oh, no. I literally can't sleep all day. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's where we started. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I have really terrible anxiety dreams. Um, so um, I, I have, uh, that's when I try to sleep. And um, I haven't woken up like that in the middle of the night in a very long time. So I'm not really sure what that what that's about. If it happens again tonight, I'll have to consult the, so in Chinese medicine, there are oh. certain times that rule over certain organs. Um, and so, yeah, I'll check that if it happens again. <laughs> that's interesting. So same yeah. with astrology too. What's that? Astrology is like that too. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Oh, we should probably introduce you first. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, I am Maddie Williams. I'm a, a writer and a poet, um, and the owner of a very beautiful cat. <laughs> that's that's it. <laughs> that's it. And that's the intro. And and things are kind of opening for you, aren't they? Like transitioning and opening. Definitely, life. definitely. This year has been all of that and very scary and like crazy but like obviously it's crazy for everybody so i'm not like but like yeah it's been if i consult my life it's been it's been crazy but in a good way definitely a good way okay. um so in january i started a page um to just well, <laughs> it started as one thing, moved into another. It's kind of evolving into another thing, but at the same time, it's all of those things. Um, yeah. So it started more as like, I felt like I was finally getting some answers about questions that I had for a long time. And I kind of just wanted to share the journey of those answers. And uh, so I started the words from within. Um, and it was really a tool to keep myself accountable um, and to stay present and to make sure that I was growing in it. Um, so that's kind of how things started. And it's funny because I'll just share the origin story because. Uh, <laughs> yes. It's so when I was um, a sophomore in undergrad, I was very um, just shy, which, but not even shy, just like I wasn't confident. And um, I had this idea to put our, um, to kind of start this like online literary magazine mm -hmm. um, because our lit mag was uh, only in print copies and nobody was really interested in bringing it online. Okay. And so actually until later when um, I was actually on the staff, somebody had um, brought that idea up. But um, so I kind of, I'd already started doing everything and I presented it uh, and not presented it. I just kind of said it when I was in class. I was like, hey, you guys, like I'm doing this thing. Like if you guys have work, creative work that you want to share, like send it to me. And my <laughs> brother straight up was like, no, that doesn't work. It'll never work. Oh. That's just, oh. That's a waste of time. Yeah. And like, who so, is this person? Don't tell me who this person is because I won't. I won't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I won't. And honestly, he probably doesn't even remember saying it, is the thing. It was just right. so off the cuff and literally yeah. just like crushed whatever little dream that I had at the time to uh -huh. uh, 
start this thing. And so I was like, well, he said it's never going to work. So it's never going to work. And uh, I put it, I already even had submissions too, is the, is the thing. And, and uh, so I just kind of put it to the side and was, I have had a Facebook page. <laughs> I didn't delete it though, thankfully. I think I'm going to start it up again soon. Um, so that yeah. I'll have somewhere else too. But um, yeah, he said that it, uh, some old white man told me that my idea wasn't good. Like, what's what's new, you know? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, it uh, it's uh, kind of sat there for a while. And then in January, I had decided, like, it was... I have been thinking about it for a while, but I, I was like, you know, what do I call it? And then I was like, oh, <laughs> this was why. <laughs> and uh, so that's why I, I just kind of stole an old name. <laughs> and, uh, so that's where the words from within came from. And then it kind of um, springed into a platform for me to uh, present my poetry. Mm -hmm. um, and that was also something I hadn't been confident sharing for any, any time before then. Right. Um, and that was fairly recently, right? Yeah, it was. Like very, very recently. Yeah, yeah, like a few months ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even know, I don't even know why, because uh, I feel I find myself usually being like, no, this is what, this is the rule that you made in your head for this. So like, this is what you need to, this is how it needs to go. And I was just, I guess I was just like, I'm just going to post this, you know? Um, and so that's been really nice because I also, uh, am very passionate about, but I don't even, I don't know if I can say I'm, I am passionate about it, but I kind of had to put it on a back burner for okay. several years, but, um, acting, I've been doing it since I was like seven, I think was when I did my first play. And it's always just been something that's given me confidence because I can like forget about, you know, me and how I feel on the inside. I'm this person. Okay. Um, and so I kind of dig into that when I uh, read my poetry and but it's it's weird because it's like it's not acting right but in a way it is like they're very real feelings and um so the emotions aren't faked <laughs> but i know that uh i don't know it, it's i don't know it, it it gives me it gives me what i need um and now yesterday i launched a service uh, called <laughs> Poetry Forest, um, and that's going to be, I really, I'm fingers crossed, I am super excited about it, um, but it's going to be, so it's, a, it's a, a service where basically somebody comes to me and they present a, an idea or um, just a, an, an affection, you know, something that they want put on paper into um, a verse and, uh, or more than one verse. And I think I, I wanted it to be very like, very, this can be anything because I feel like I have, I have so many friends with different needs, you know? Yeah. And, the, um, and so I didn't want to feel like this couldn't be something that everybody could use. Like not everybody has a, significant other that they want to you know send a poem to and, and you know some people just want to read something kooky and wacky and so I wanted to leave space for that and um and also I think that there's gonna be this connection in the collaboration because it's very much going to be people being you know vulnerable and, and right. sharing um, um, deeper parts of themselves with me and um, I think that's going to help me too in a lot of ways because it's very easy at least for me to um, get caught up in everything that's not there <laughs> 
uh, rather than all that is, you know, right. right. So that's, that's all the things. <laughs> Those are really awesome big projects and I'm glad that you were picking up the literary magazine again and I think I can see where that professor was coming from because um, it's not you know there I try I've I know I've tried some things too, some big projects like that and and um, they've been on the back burner for a long time and part of it is because people like be like oh well it, it doesn't work for these reasons or you need these things in place or whatever and I'm like yeah but I think the better question is how can it work how can mm -hmm. it work and like kind of the frameworks that a lot of folks are thinking of are on old frameworks you know like on old, exactly. old systems and um the world is a lot different than it was 10, 20 years ago. Like the world's a lot different than it was five years ago. Like yeah. um, I still remember when I got my first computer and I was like, oh no, you know, like, <laughs> I was like, what? Um, and um, so sometimes I'm still not completely savvy. And then even as we're using the technology, it's changing very quickly too. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. we, we have like, it, it, just about anyone can learn coding, right? If they if they feel up to it. Coding as a kid, like on my <laughs> and then as a teenager on Tumblr, like <laughs> right, right. We start with like the basic HTML and stuff, and just like um, for me, it was um, LiveJournal. Um, okay. Like yeah, way back one of the you know old blogs, old bloggers oh, okay. <laughs> um and things like that you know like just um that's that's kind of where folks start i think and then um there are other coding languages obviously and you can do like some pretty cool stuff <laughs> um and it's accessible it's actually accessible yep. technology and accessible mm -hmm. information and so like that's I've, I've been in talks before too um i remember i was on a panel one time and um this woman was in the uh program and uh, she was talking about a book that had failed. And her question to the panel was, um, you know, publishing's, she, her, her idea was like publishing's dead or something like that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, there's like great expansiveness in the question, how? And yeah. that was all I said, because I was just like, I was kind of annoyed with her. And um, <laughs> Um, also, there is a great like opening and how. So I'm really glad you're opening that up. Um, and also, this is something that I ran into somebody yesterday that I'm going to interview later um, this week. Um, just um, the act of creating a space and a platform for your voice. Right. That's so powerful. I think so. Like there are plenty of people who do that and like they're bomb blast, but like they're that's not what's happening here. And so like, I kind of, I, I want to talk about that a little bit, yeah. the importance of creating your own space. And also that uh, in that spirit of community and collaboration, um, and like, I'm just gonna, there's a cliff because <laughs> I don't want to like lead the question yeah. or whatever or the statement, but I want you to talk about that a bit. Um, I think, yeah, I, cause I, I think that there's, you know, I hear from other people who've maybe been doing it a bit longer and not even necessarily in um, the lit world, but um, just adults and older people, <laughs> but like, you know, my elders. Yeah. Um, just, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, I really mean like, parental figures yeah. <laughs> in my life um but just i think that everybody thinks that there's one way to do it yeah and there's so many different ways and then once you find one way i feel like it tends to lead to another yeah and another and <laughs> i definitely get caught up in like this has to be it like you know this has to get this response or like you're not good enough and uh, i hate that you know like uh i have a line in actually the um poem i was talking to you about but it 
talks about my feelings about my work not being received in a very specific way and it's a very specific way that was in my head <laughs> which doesn't always align with reality maybe never <laughs> but um I don't know I think that like I remember a few years ago when the e-reader came out and they were like books are gonna be gone like nobody's buying books anymore oh I bought so many books I was like I refuse I will buy all the books they're 326 I'm definitely buying that shit up <laughs> But they were, they did get, you know, they had their time. Yeah. Um, and, you know, even if books had become obsolete, writing wouldn't have right. become obsolete. And even if one day written word becomes obsolete, there's still going to be other ways that we're taking in information mm -hmm. and feeling, you know, ways, different ways where we're feeling feelings and feeling good about ourselves. It honestly reminds me of this, like, big, huge boom in TikTok. Um, and, like, first of all, they're trying to ban it. Um, what? What? Yeah. Uh, well, I can think of a lot of reasons why, but... Well, all, all that I, from what I've vaguely picked up on Twitter, it has something to do with China and... Um, okay. The they own it. I don't necessarily know how much, how true that is, but, um, and I don't have a TikTok. A friend actually said that I should get on there and post some, post some things, which I think would be very interesting and, and, uh, lead me to a different demographic. But, um, you know, there are people really giving out very useful information on TikTok and it's engaging with people who don't want to read, Mm -hmm. uh, even if it's on their phone, you know, right. <laughs> and who uh, may not be able to concentrate on a video, you know, or a newscast. Like, right. I think that there needs to be uh, questions answered about accuracy um, in that way. But other than that, I think that it's a it's a great little platform that's springing up and obviously every platform has its downsides um sure i'm sure there's there's a dark side of, <laughs> of tiktok um tiktok horror film there's there's these there's like whole communities just like on twitter or anywhere else you know where people are giving out information and like you said it's accessible yes um and so i think we definitely have to think about the way that we're connecting with people um and how it is evolving uh, and especially in this space where we can't, you know, kiss our friends on the cheek. We gotta yeah, just... What? We can't kiss our friends on the cheek, you know. Right. I know, I met some folks yesterday I've been wanting to meet for a long time, and I just, I couldn't move from my seat because I, like, I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, I want to, I want to hold your hand. Like, I want to give you a hug. Like, this, you know, this meeting has been, you know, long time waiting, and, and, and we couldn't. <laughs> And it was, it was awful. Um, yeah. And so it's just like, yeah, what do we, you know, what do we do? What do we do in the meantime? And uh, it's kind of cool for me too, because I'm super awkward anyway, like to the point where I went to this big thing once for musicians or whatever. My friend and I were standing in the corner because we're both terribly awkward, right? When we're on stage playing stuff, we were doing this cool ambiance stuff, and then we get yeah. to walk off stage, and like we, you know, we don't. It's cool, but like in this thing, you ha you're supposed to schmooze and you're supposed to network and talk with people, and we're just standing in the corner. And so finally, I'm like, we gotta do something. I mean, we we made it here, and so I went up to a group of people. I'm like, hi, I'm awkward. What do you do? <laughs> but like, it feels like. Everyone is awkward now, and it's so great. It's so great for me because I'm like, cool. I'm not the only awkward person in this room right now. This is awesome. So I appreciate it. <laughs> I I feel like I can't even remember like what it's like to go to an event and think about socializing. Even <laughs> you know, yeah. like. What what was that like? And but I do know, <laughs> I do know that it is it is very hard. Even when you have a friend, it's it's hard yeah. unless it's like this confident, you know. And I love having those friends. My best friend is 
it's like that. She's also very selective, so it's <laughs> kind I mean, of uh, balances out. <laughs> after after a while, like if you if you have any kind of social anxiety, you realize there are some people you aren't socially anxious around, and like then and therefore you become very selective and um, sometimes a little over earnest. I try to be careful because I know I get over earnest when like like oh you're so great and I feel great around you. I want to be around you all the time. And they're like yeah I have a life. <laughs> so like um sometimes that can happen too yeah um, but it's just like uh yeah I try not to worry too much about what I what I put what I say on here <laughs> well I think that like for me I mean I'm only 25 so a lot of the spaces that I've been in have been with people much younger or not yeah. even much younger but just like you know, early 20s, yeah. um, the uh, early 30s, and I think that there's just that, like, that distance, especially because a lot of us aren't that confident, but we're not, like, we're not in our heads thinking, oh, these people aren't talking to me because they're not confident. I, at least in, in my head, I'm thinking, these people are not talking to me because they don't like me, and, like, I remember... I really had to like work on walking into a room and not yeah. assuming everybody in it right. was like, who are you? Why are you yeah. here? And not yeah. and just be, you know, closed off towards me because it wasn't even the case. <laughs> but it was very hard to not feel that way. Um, and I don't know, I think now I'm moving into a space where I just don't care. <laughs> This. I love this because it's taking me this long. I'm I'm 44, and um, it's taking me this long to be able to be like, you know what? I just really don't have time to care about a lot of things. Like if if people want to collaborate with me and talk with me about certain things, I'm so down. But like mm -hmm. there are certain things I just I just don't really have time for anymore. And so that's mm -hmm. kind of what it comes down to. But like I've been noticing that like um, like folks very young people like in um their early to mid 20s and early 30s and um some folks who are in their mid 30s as well um it's been really cool for me to see like there are so many amazing thoughtful people and also not with the same kinds of hang-ups that myself and a lot of the folks I know have yeah. um mm -hmm. because of the times that we grew up with I think is part of yeah. what it was um like someone <sighs> like the the media likes to make fun of like you know generation x or y or whatever um and i don't see what the media is seeing i mean sure there are hipsters or whatever there are hipsters every generation um, freaking Literally. breakfast club hello <laughs> um, and like um uh and it's just like you know e each generation is trying to solve some issues from the last generation and so like I always kind of joke it's kind of a joke it's like maybe 80 85 percent joke like well what the heck were we we doing we were listening to depressing music and feeling sorry for ourselves so like like I feel like a lot of the folks that I'm seeing um in um generation x and y are like doing really cool shit and those are the folks who I've been wanting to hang out with. Like, we don't always jive necessarily because I've got like 10 years on them. But, but, like, <laughs> but like, I dig what they're doing, you know, like in, in the realm of health, in the realm of social justice, um, in the realm of academia. Um, um, something I saw really recently was this really cool energy of like kind of taking the old language of academia and being, you know, coming in with their lens and being like yeah um this is why it's broken and being able to articulate it beautifully and just like kind of bust through all the bullshit and like clear the way and also this kind of new inclusivity like um this interesting energy of like um showing like this is why we're important this is why this conversation is important you all got that part right and this is how you're included in this and how you can help and how we can work together and so like they're finally like having a uh, language to be able to talk about that and it's really fucking cool so I think, <laughs> uh i think that it's that we're evolving as um as a human race like i i have to give 
thanks to like my mother and you know the the other women in my family who who have like and you know the men in my family too but um who have just like they've made this space for me to be who I am um and you know other people have have done the same and so I think that um we're kind of reaping the benefits of that evolution and I think that's really you know important important to note because now even like children are just the and they've always children have always been you know super intelligent. yes yes <laughs> yes. Whoa. Kids are freaking smart. Yeah, and uncanny. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, wait, what did you just say? <laughs> like you just brought my whole world for the next 20 years, little, little <laughs> kid. Like, holy crap, I'm gonna be writing. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> also the autonomy that kids have been given um, yeah. more recently has really you know, aided in, in that revolution, like, the, it's weird, the, the way that, like, I don't know, I feel like people try and, and, yes, you gave birth to this kid, but, you know, you don't own the kid, like, you don't right. own anything, none of us right. own anything, like, and I think that's also something that people really need to get into their head. You don't own anything. Even right. if you print a paper and it says you're the owner, you don't own it. Like, <laughs> Yeah, and that's really real, actually. There's like a whole thick book. I forget what it's called. Um, but yeah, our government can come in and be like, yeah, we need that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you can't, you can't do anything about it. It's, it's gone. Um, and... I mean, even on like an esoteric and spiritual level, or even just thinking about earth, you don't have to go esoteric or spiritual. Um, I have a lot of friends who are atheists and whatnot, and, um, which is which is great um, because it helps them to see clearly um, in a lot of respects, I feel. Um, but like, uh, even just thinking about the earth, like what is really ours, right? We, we get a very short time here. We get a short time here and then we go back, we go back into the earth you know, um, and that's it, and then at some point, all memory of our existence is gone, and um, we really are tied to, you know, the, our existence in this form, um, and um, I personally believe that is a sickness, I believe it's a sickness, um, yeah. definitely an untruth, <laughs> And, and, and also, also like just the whole, like, you know, like we're, we all get to do that. We all get to be bored and we all get to die. And, uh, it's, it's not anything that's, we, we can't stop that. So yeah. I, I like that. I like thinking about nothing being ours. Um, I think a lot, I think that about that a lot and like, um, like polyethics, um, and multi-amory and stuff, um, which is still a little hard for me because, um, you know, I'm, I, I come from parents who, like, um, you know, it was really important to be partnered, and it was really important to, and in a lot of ways, these partnerships were ways to um, escape and to, like, have some kind of viability, um, even fairly recently. And so like those stories are still in my physiology. Um, mm -hmm. But even even studying those things, when you start applying um, those ethics to all kinds of other things about like, my body is not yours, your body is not mine. Um, you know, my thoughts, etc. These things aren't yours or mine. Um, and I get to live how I, I, I want to live and hopefully, hopefully with some kind of ethics so that people aren't destroyed. But then if you apply that to things like communities, what does that look yeah. like, right? All of a sudden, it's like um, people aren't necessarily beholden, but they are possibly more open to give and also free to explore and, and, and learn more. And like, um, you know, 
bring stuff back if they want to. And it's, it's kind of a really cool, beautiful thing where stagnancy doesn't really exist anymore. At least that's, that's how I see it. I don't know. I, I've just been thinking about this a lot. So I, I hope it's not like a weird topic no. or anything. Oh. I think that um, like capitalism is not that old and mm -hmm. there were other ways of living on this yes. earth that um, that our ancestors have known. And um, I think capitalism is the sickness. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> And it puts all of these expectations on us. You have to have the house, you have to have the car, you know, the whole atomic uh, family and whatever. Like, um, I'm really interested in the coming years and um, first off, dismantling the system. Yeah. <laughs> uh, second off, <laughs> uh, what evolves out of it? Um, because with what's going on right now in these protests that are an extension of the inception of this country <laughs> um, like it just they've been going on like yeah there's, there's never been a time where we have not been fighting to have basic human rights and so right. it feels like the tipping point is either here or coming right um, and so I'm interested to see what the world will look like um, on the other end of it, especially because I don't feel like, I guess I think that the hardest part of that hurdle is going to be letting go. Yes. Um, yeah. And so <laughs> I've been <laughs> trying to not you know hold on to this idea of a future so tightly and not of a future but just like a specific future you know that I may or may not have envisioned you know right the future is not gonna look like what we thought it was gonna look like that's become pretty evident um yeah and if people aren't willing to let go of these like illusions essentially illusions um you know that they like in the, in the ownership argument you know you don't right. own it <laughs> you right. just don't <laughs> don't own it um, we don't and, own it yeah uh, i think it's gonna be interesting to interesting at best <laughs> um probably a little scary eventually really freaking great um because right. we're we're taking it back um it was never theirs right and um i just um i hope that <sighs> i i don't want to say anything too morbid i i but like let's get the guillotine out that's that's a <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm good. <laughs> well, I almost feel like, well, unfortunately, they're trying to take a lot of uh, uh, other folks down too, but I feel like we're seeing the death throes. Um, at first, I was like, I want to believe that we're seeing the death throes, but now I really believe we're seeing the death throes. And like, well, while there's a lot of messed up stuff happening and a lot of like really dangerous and terrible things, we can't unsee it. There's like, yeah. it, uh, I think Arundhati Roy, um, she uh, did a talk with Haymarket maybe a couple months ago. Um, and she likened um, the coronavirus, um, this whole pandemic as an MRI. And so the MRI, it just sees everything and, and you can't unsee it, it's, it's there. It's imprinted yeah. on the, you know, um, thing. So like, and, and that's really cool. It's really cool. It's like, the stuff that's happening isn't cool. The stuff that has been happening isn't cool. But um, now, oh no, it is now. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, uh, yeah, so your mom just called. <laughs> and then she texted me too. <laughs> oh, I love her. <laughs> <laughs> Mom's always 
always know. They always know the right time to call. Or she knows. She knows. I didn't know. I couldn't get away with a thing. She always Me either. Knew. Me either. I uh, I always thought I was. Um, I, I'm not. I'm not a great liar, so I just don't lie. But I think part of it is because I could never lie to mom. Yeah. Because I'd be in the middle of a lie, and she's like, "You're lying, aren't you?" And I'd just be like, "What?" <laughs> I just start crying. <laughs> I'm lying. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's not really i don't yeah anyway that lying um i'm, I'm not gonna say i don't lie but uh because that would probably be a lie <laughs> right. but you know those the ones that count i don't think i don't know i don't know anyway at least with my mom i sure as hell can't so right no no Used to freak me out. I'm like, how do you know? <laughs> that is a weird little piece of intuition they're like chipped with. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> what? <laughs> it, I don't even remember what we were talking about. We, I was going off because I'm like caffeinated now, and um, I don't know. I just have all these weird ideas. I'm, I'm really excited about or curious about, um, but we I, we should track back a little bit. Um, <laughs> I do <laughs> have weird ideas. <laughs> he said, I do have weird ideas. <laughs> I love weird ideas. I think we were talking about the death rows. Um, oh, yeah. Well, I was, ta I was saying death rows, and then also just the whole, uh, yeah, do you remember now? Like, yeah. I do. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know if I was gonna next talk next about that specifically, but I have been interested in um, so after the fall of America, you know, <laughs> thinking about where we'll be and what life will look like. Um, and I think that there is going to be just, uh, and from, this isn't like a, my own like brilliant idea. I've, I've been reading um, texts from, from different uh, like sociologists so about um, this. I, I think that, that there's probably going to be a move towards communal living. Yeah. Um, and then we're probably going to have to worry about cults. <laughs> yeah. And then also just, you know, toxicity in those relationships too, or, you know, like, because I yeah. have seen that there was a, um, there are some communities I've, I've looked at, um, uh, cause it would be cool to like, not feel like, like you have to fare it alone all the time. And I mean, the truth is we, we never really hope, hopefully I, 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 my experience has been that we're never really faring it alone if we're being honest with ourselves um you know there's a tendency to be totally. alone but like it just it just takes different forms and I've, I've seen how it can work um and i've also seen how it can have that cultish quality and i think part of it is because we all we, we are coming from this kind of old paradigm of like hierarchies you know where yep. there's someone in charge and there's so it's like we have the language and the frameworks and the reading and all the things um and it's almost like we don't yet know how it naturally works so so there's a lot of growing pains i think mm -hmm. um and so like back to that toxicity i'm talking about um i'm stalling a little bit because like you know there's a really wonderful thing that happens when there is a group of people willing to work through the shit together and yeah. um i think i used to always think it was like the blind leading the blind um but i think that i th i think that was kind of a naive way of looking at it um because if people are doing the work even if it's going to be rocky um, I think, I think it can work. And then of course, you know, further down the line, the work that, the work that, the effects of our work that we won't see, it'll be different, you know, right. in the next iteration. Um, and that, those are the parts that have been 
hard for me um, that I'm that I've been struggling with for a little while, you know, with communal living, especially since like I'm pretty independent and I always try to figure out things on my own. And um, uh, and at the same time, I can't say that I did it by myself. There have been a lot of really beautiful people and helpers in my life, um, you know, as as early as last week. So, <laughs> you know, like, um, so I, I think that's a really, really good topic. Like, just, you know, what it, what is communal look, living going to look like? And like, how do we make space for those, you know, rocky parts and the growing pains? Um, like, what, what does that take? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> well, I think also, because I think for, first I thought, well, you know, intention, but even people with the best intentions don't necessarily lead everyone to the best outcome. Our favorite supervillains have the best intentions. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> that, um. So yeah, no, I think that that's, that's going to be something interesting. And I also think that it's going to, like, if we did really go down that road, um, it would have great impacts on the environment, at the very least, you know. Because then we see, like, we don't need a, you know, there's so many things that we could share. Mm -hmm. um, and that that was a lot of the lesson that I've had in um, just like in the real recent past. It's just like, um, are you a good custodian of all the shit that's in your house? Mm -hmm. uh, and um, also like, are you using that thing right now? I can definitely use it. Um, and then also just kind of a free flow of uh, resources and things like that. Um, everything from food to money to tools to whatever to a ride to you know pick up something um, and these these a lot of these things weren't things that I had access to before that that situation so um, I can definitely see the boons in that and I, I would like to see that happening more um, because like yeah capitalism it's like capitalism says you need all of this stuff, but you don't really. Um, and every person is supposed to have all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it says that you have to do all of this on your own and in a certain amount of time and consume, consume, <laughs> consume every single day. And I think of like, all that we destroy just so that we can feel like we're keeping up with everyone else when yeah. we never when who who feels like that ever you know like i think that accepting that we're not could maybe help us feel like that like accepting that you know our situation is never going to look like anybody else's that <laughs> our home's never going to look exactly like somebody else's you know or it's not <laughs> <laughs> just our, our lives in general our tracks aren't even they're not supposed to be the same and, right and, uh, it, it's it's has roots in that are so much deeper than you know right now so to really analyze it, we'd have to go <laughs> than we have time for but right. I'm, I'm i'm hopeful you know that that in my lifetime, I'm like, I'm not only gonna be able to like see it, I'm gonna be able to live it, you know? Yeah. And that people are going to get back what's theirs as well. Yes, it, and it feels it, that I do see that. I see, you know, now that we're not all on gerbil wheels, on our respective gerbil wheels, <laughs> like that constant consuming and that constant having to work so much just to be able to afford to consume. And like, um, now that that isn't happening, like, yeah, a lot of people miss that. Like, I know I'm, I'm kind of a workaholic. I, mm -hmm. um, and part of the reason why is it's, for me, it's kind of a coping mechanism. If I'm like so busy, I can't see straight and then I crash and then I get up the next day. I don't, there's a lot of stuff I don't have to think about. 
I, I could just think about work. Um, but what happens is, um, like, I thought something was real wrong with my brain. And it was because I was working five fucking jobs, seven days a week. And I was working so much because, um, you know, maybe there are some goals or maybe some things I thought I needed or whatever. And then COVID happened. And then I'm like, there's nothing but abundance. Like at the beginning, you know, there were all these efforts for, um, and I know some folks have it real bad, but I realized I didn't have it that bad. And I actually had enough to share, which was like really eye, eye opening for me. I'm like, I'm spinning my wheels so fast all the time, nonstop. And I have excess. And what does that mean? Like, I don't have to work like I've been working. It's all a lie. And now my brain space is starting to come back for me, for my life. Right. And I'm just like, holy crap. Like, it's really, really true. Like, the brain needs is a commodity. This is a commodity now, and we need to protect it. And mm. part of protecting that is realizing all of this, like cap, you know, like the 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 um, promises of capitalism are um, they're shiny bric-a-brac. It's not even mm. true. It's it's cheaply made shit, and yeah. you know, stuff engineered to break a couple of days from now. I mean. Absolutely. I agree. Um, and then we also, <laughs> I guess that during that whole conversation, I forgot that like half the country, I don't even want to say half, I'll say a third because I'm trying to be hopeful. A third yeah. of the country is like so enmeshed in fascism. Like what do we do about that? you know how do we heal that i don't even know like i don't even know <laughs> so i could not frightening. I yeah. begin to tell you um, how but i think that in a lot of the times where i'm like hopeful for the future i'm not thinking about that and and i also remember thinking when i was thinking about communities and stuff and thinking about uh cults in that same um breath i thought like yeah we already have cults yeah you know, that's they're already here and you know sometimes we're in them um and they stop us from from really how do i want to put this they, they stop us from being authentic um in that how can I expect someone to, even if they have begun to see the light, how can I expect somebody to support something like, I don't know, Black Lives Matter, when literally every single person around them does not? Mm -hmm. What, and, and them speaking any sort of discord, even the tiniest bit, means exhalation or you know like you're you're not a part of that club that whatever the cult anymore you know you it, i think that there's just oh how do we and i don't know i don't have like the answer to it but like there are cults and and even just like the mask debate has you know proven that to be true like we politicize everything um and so yeah it's scary it's scary and um the cdc now having to report through the white house and not being able to release information is some of the scariest news that uh, yeah. i think we've had to hear um through the, the whole pandemic maybe it's, you know. it's all the stuff from all the sci-fi books we've been reading since like freaking junior high school that maybe we were like oh this feels uncomfortable why does it feel oh because it could happen because someone's telling us we're heading in this direction i feel like sci-fi does that a lot um tells us you know what directions we're heading in and and the problems with um with these ideologies that are, you know, in place. Um, and it, it is frightening. Um, 
I don't, I don't know if you heard about the news about in Portland, um, where unmarked vans are just pulling people off the, pulling protesters off the street. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, like, I mean, there's an endless list of atrocities happening all over the globe and in our own backyard. And um, I, I know I get, I, I get so scared too. Um, and I think, I know for me, like a, a lot of my life I've spent um, rendering myself nondescript. So, um, you know, not saying much or trying not to step on anybody's toes or um, trying to be as racially ambiguous as possible um, because I was able to do that or um, covering my curves. Um, I was just writing about that this morning. Um, why don't I feel comfortable on my body? Because I felt like I had to cover my curves and become nondescript so that I didn't bother anyone, uh, so that no one talked about me, so that no one noticed, so that it wasn't dangerous. And you know, all these different things. And um, for the last few years, I've, I've just been realizing like it was really important to not do that anymore. Yeah. Um, to be really clear, like, uh, you know, I was always like, I hate labels and all this other stuff. And I'm, I'm not particularly fond of them, but what language is, language is our, our best try. It's our best tool to like tell where we're at and also to try to um, describe what is happening in our world, right? And so like, as a person who works with words, it's really important to play with words and experiment with words and figure it out, right? We have to, we have to name the thing before we can heal the thing. And so we have to figure out what those words are for our experience. And that's something I feel very strongly about and have for a really long time. I just was never able to necessarily articulate that until really, really recently. Um, and part of it is because I, did not feel that my experiences were necessarily important to talk about. Um, and then when I started um, trying to work these things out, um, definitely sent me to therapy, my MFA did, because um, that's what, a lot of what my MFA is. It's like, I don't know if I'm supposed to be talking about this stuff. It's really uncomfortable. People are gonna be mad, right? But that's the thing, it's my fucking experience. And it, maybe it doesn't look like someone else's experience. Um, like, uh, like if we're talking about say blackness, um, uh, maybe it doesn't look like a lot of people's experience and that's very, very true. And I recognize that and like, it's important for me to recognize it, but it's also important for me to recognize that my experience is important. And so what I'm finding by finally embarking on that journey is I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. There are so many people who are in the same boat who have been told, you know, marginalized within the marginalization and just like, um, you know, your experience isn't important, et cetera, but, but it is, it's part of the conversation and we're not going to heal all the shit if we're not having all those conversations too. Right. I don't know. That's, that's how I feel about it. Um, how do you feel about it? <laughs> Talk about that. If not, just be like, next. <laughs> no, we've about this before. Um, and I think that we had similar, um, yeah. like it's, it's weird because like our paths weren't necessarily similar or the same, but the way that we felt in them was. Um, and so there is, it is a, there is a thing about, it is a thing about survival and. Yes. Um, yep the the stories of black folks it's it's a spectrum of 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 tales and experiences um commonalities and so i think that all of our stories are important um because somebody needs to hear them like you said you know there's not there are people just that need to hear what you have to say about it. There are people that need to hear what I have to say about it. Yes. Um, and it's weird because it's like, you may not have expected them to, to need to hear it. Um, yes. And that, 
it's such a cool thing though when it happens because it's like you know you you put your work out there and you're like oh god here it comes i'm gonna be strewn apart on twitter because i've seen it happen to people i've yeah. seen it happen it is ugly it is ugly people take each other down they rip them to shreds they destroy their careers on twitter that's yeah. the world we live in and like I, that frightens me, um, but I also believe um, there's a philosopher uh, who's Colorado-based named Ken Wilber, and one of the things he said that struck me the most is like, um, you know, he said it in philosophy words or whatever, um, <laughs> and so it's a long quote, it's like a page, two-page quote, but essentially what he said is if you have something to say, say it. That is your job, whether it's whatever quality or effect it has that is your job if you truly believe in it say that shit and then the rest will come to pass like if if yeah. um if if people agree they will bolster you up and there are people who will support you probably there are people who support you no matter what and the effect the energy the ripples that happen after you say that thing um is going to kind of determine what comes next whether right. that's that turns out good or bad for you, um, <laughs> um, you know, because if you're a super villain saying some crazy ass shit, that's maybe a little twisted and like, you know, there's truth in it, but like something about it is wrong. The masses are going to be like, wait a second, like, you know, yes. And holy shit, we got we got to do something about this because it's going to lead us to destruction. That needs mm -hmm. to happen. And um, I thought that, that I that's something I try to really hold you know, beside me as, um, through my fear, um, because, because ultimately it isn't about me. I, yes, I'm coming at it with my stories and stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, and there have been other people who have been really brave who, um, if I hadn't read them, I don't think I would have spoken at all. Like, um, uh, Toy Dare, Co Toy Dare Coat, I still, I, I feel so terrible because I never say her name right, but um, she, she's white passing, and um, she wrote a book called The Black Notebooks. She was never going to publish this book. It's essentially a journal where she took note of all of these, like, terrible, like, racialized things that would happen, um, a lot of which she was able to see because she was white passing, and mm -hmm. then when she was with her black husband like how, how things look different and living in a white predominantly white neighborhood etc like all these things that happen she took note of them and um that she i that was a really big part of me trying to you know starting to start having the words to be able to say oh my gosh actually you know this is important um i think that Lately, I've been trying to, and not even trying to, I think I've, I've, I've come to understand that, um, I don't know, myself, outside of my experiences and kind of understanding that I, I, I guess more so understanding my privilege. Yeah. Um, even within my blackness, you know, right. The it was a privilege to, even though I, you know, changed myself to survive certain situations, I had that privilege. Right. You know? Right. Like dark skinned women don't get that privilege. Right. Dark skinned people don't get that privilege right. to kind of morph into you know, something that racism will just pass over, you know? Right. Um, and so I think that we all have, we all have, you know, different stories. And the first thing is being willing to listen to everyone's story and accept their truth. Right. Um, because it's not, it, it sometimes will clash with our own, like, I think I was on Twitter and they were having the dis a, a discussion on colorism and um, the the way in which lighter skin, you know, since since the inception of this country, lighter skin black people have had it easier. Yeah. You no, know? even it, it, during slavery, like so. Uh, and then there were a lot of 
light-skinned people in the thread that were like, you know, I've dealt with racism, I've had it bad too, da da da. And it's just like, this is the same argument as white privilege. How are you guys not seeing it? It doesn't matter that you've had such and such experiences. Their experiences are still valid. Yeah. It doesn't. I don't know. It doesn't. Neg- nobody else's experience negates your own. Right. And, um. So that's been something that I've been thinking about because because I have been having these conversations and me having so, <laughs> such a bit. It's been hard. It's been really hard. Like seeing who I've surrounded myself with and especially now like you have nothing to say nothing to say at all I don't care that every single one of your family members is a gun-toting you know trumper I don't care like that should be even more reason for you to say something yeah you're not who I thought you were um and then maybe Maybe I didn't even think you were this person. Maybe I didn't get to a place where I thought long and hard enough about it. Um, But it is, I look back and I'm, I feel shame, but I've been working on that um, and trying to, to understand that I was, I was just trying to, to survive. And in that survival, it became like, the world that I lived in and once I was there I didn't know how to get out and that's why I don't have that many black friends that's why I haven't consumed as much black literature as I could have like I'm just now getting to the point where I'm not in these spaces where I feel like I'm having to be somebody that I'm not you know Um, and I, I want to interject really quick because I, I just want to thank you for using the ter- for using the word survival because there is a lot of shame. Um, I think uh, the, I, I know I've I've felt it too. I'm actually working on um, a series of things called I Need More Black Friends, um, <laughs> meaning me, <laughs> um, and uh, and you know for similar reasons like um, because of circumstance, the folks that I was surrounded with and now 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 I have a choice and um and it it is uncomfortable and I have felt a lot of shame and embarrassment about that and um understanding where I was like I said like rendering myself nondescript was a survival tactic it was a survival tactic and a coping mechanism and like understanding that gosh it's like that's a huge compassion for yourself I think, I think that's true. And then I get to the point where I realize that it turned me into, I wouldn't say nothing, a nothingness, but like, I didn't, I'm just now starting to identify with Madi. You know, my name is hard to pronounce. A lot of people don't say it, you know, that, that I, like, aside from my family, my close friends, you know, so I, I didn't even like, I don't know. I didn't, I I don't want to say I didn't feel like a person, but I didn't associate who I was with myself. And I don't know if that makes sense. Yes, it absolutely makes sense. It makes so much sense to me. It really, really does. It was more like living but not being, and I think that there, maybe it was presence. I didn't have presence. Um, I didn't fully experience, I didn't, and I probably, it was probably <laughs> part of the reason why I wasn't happy. It was because I wasn't, you know, experiencing myself. I wasn't, even when I was, you know, looking at myself in the mirror, mm-hmm. it wasn't always me. Um, I had braids for years and n- rarely saw my natural hair. I'm wearing it now. <laughs> but, you know, this is a fairly new thing and it was really really hard um it was really hard to get to this place where I like my hair and I love my hair but it was the step that I needed to love myself 
for sure. Yeah. You know, because I've been on this, like, I've been like, why don't I, you know, why can't I love myself? I've been trying, you know, I've, you know, I've done all the things I should, I should love myself by now, you know, right. and I didn't, and I couldn't figure out why. And once I started wearing my hair natural, I didn't like it. It was hard. I felt, yeah, felt not, I didn't feel pretty a lot of days. There were months I, you know, when I first started, I just did not feel good. I didn't feel pretty. And, um, I just look in the mirror and like cry. Like, <laughs> and now though, now that I do feel good uh, and I do, you know, look in the mirror and, and like what I see, it, it's a different kind of confidence. Yeah. It, and it feels, it feels real for, for the first time. And that's really, really nice. Um, I don't know if there's, <laughs> I don't know if there's anything <laughs> else that I want to say about that. I don't, I mean, so from, I don't know, in really the, the dangerousness started in, um, when I graduated high school and was, um, going to college, I was about to start college, but I got really heavy into, um, I was bulimic, I um, had disordered eating, I, um, you know, I just went through all the things. One day I would do this, one day I would do that, something's got to work, you know, and really like, just, and it was my brain too, just thinking like, I hate myself, I hate myself, and it was, and I couldn't, I couldn't figure out. And I, I eventually started seeing an amazing therapist and our meeting was just super, super kismet. And I, you know, now I'm like trying to find a therapist and I'm like, I want them to be as perfect as she was. Yeah. But, um, it, uh, yeah, not working that well, but you know, um, so I came from, from that. And yeah. when I had gotten the physical, uh, parts of the disorder under control, you know, I was still like, why, why is he still, why is this person still in my head telling me these things, you know? Um, and so recently with, and it's because of COVID, so <laughs> I wasn't able to get my hair done. And it's, it's, um, it's been a blessing. There's been so many, uh, so many blessings through this, this, pandemic period um I agree. 2020 I wouldn't say it's been like I don't know maybe I would say it's been my year like <laughs> it feels I feel bad saying that <laughs> I feel bad saying the year that is very very hard for a lot of people it's been a really good year for me but it has been um so I think now I think I'm done <laughs> okay well yeah again like it's it's this interesting space where only the present is is <laughs> like there's no we, we we can't like we can't live our lives from the past right now and we don't know what the future looks like so it's this interesting space like um it can be very fear inducing uh uh for sure um, but I think a lot of folks have been telling us for a long time that, like, this is all we have. And this is the only thing that's been able to stop everything in such a way where we can really be that. There's, and, and, and I, don't, I don't know, like, it's, I don't, I get that, like, you know, kind of having some feels about it being a good time instead of a bad time because people I think I got a message today as like um they were like so things are really bad for you right I'm like you know I have some worries but honestly I'm I'm okay like mm -hmm. I I'm not stuck in a crazy house with a bunch of people who don't like me or who have you know like I, I don't have to deal with that I like I have a home I'm not food poor um I like I'm getting my headspace back and like some clarity about who I want to be in the world. I, I, you know, it's not it's not perfect, but it's kind of not bad. You know, it's yeah. pretty good. Um, 
and I think I've been hesitant to say that too, but it's just like, this is, I think this is what I needed to happen. Um, and honestly, I think it's what all of us needed to happen. Um, yeah. Cause like I said, there are just things we can't unsee anymore. Um, yeah. And it's almost, it's almost like you have to give yourself a full frontal lobotomy to unsee it. And then, and then <laughs> shiny lights, you know? <laughs> so like, <laughs> I mean, and some people want that, unfortunately, but um, we'll see, we'll see what happens. And there are lots of, there are lots of things that uh, worry me and that I'm afraid of and that I feel some kind of obligation. I don't know what my role is yet, but I definitely feel some kind of obligation. Like, what can I do? You know, what can yeah. I, what, what can I do? What should I be doing right now? Um, so I don't know. I have a lot of guilt around surrounding that part. I had a friend the other day that um, we were talking and he was, he was saying essentially the same thing, you know? Um, and I was like, you shouldn't, you shouldn't feel like that. And, um, and just kind of wondering how he could do better, you know? And, yeah. and yeah. I was like, no, you should be worrying about um, yourself. Yeah, 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 you know? Yeah. And uh, he was like, or I just, I just said, you don't, you shouldn't, you know, worry about, because it was more so as he, he was worrying about what, if he was doing enough compared to what everybody else was doing. And I was like, you know, don't do that. But he was also like, if I didn't, you know, if we didn't do that, we, a lot of things would not get done, you know, if yeah. we weren't wonder, constantly wondering how we can help and how we can do more. And I was like, oh, I, right. Thank you for that. I think that was the missing piece that I needed. Um, I do know a lot of really amazing people who are activists and um, they're activists in like equity work and um, nonprofit and like literally fighting uh, really scary battles um, and that, that, that are, you know, I think that's where sometimes I feel like I need to be there and they're like, we are on the front lines so that everyone else can do whatever their role is where they are. Um, and um, that, that was a really powerful moment. I felt kind of like the kid, you know, like, oh, but I want to go too, you know. <laughs> but the kid would be in the fucking way. You know what I'm saying? The kid would be in the way. And um, the, like the kid has other, other roles or the teenager or whatever, right? Um, and so that would that was a really good lesson for me. And like, like I said, that was a missing piece for me because I'm always like, you know, feeling so much guilt and stuff about like, oh, what I should be doing something else. Like, what am I doing here? Sitting, taking a second nap today. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I definitely agree. And I, but I feel like just, keeping our head above water is is sometimes that's such an important thing this this year you know yeah this whole year like if you can get up and you know and make it like yeah shit some days it's hard you this know yeah some days you wake up and you're like i'm in a pandemic right now i'm living through it and then other days you wake up and something bad happens and you're like, this just happened to me in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> yeah. 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 So really just, just keeping your head above water right now. It's, is amazing. And, that is, and that's real talk too. Cause like, you know, uh, survival is a form of rebellion. <laughs> um, <laughs> just existing, <laughs> you know, um, well, that's, that is important. That was super important. It's like, I made myself breakfast today. Yes. <laughs> and I think it's something to be said. I think in, it, like that's important all the time, you know? Right. So yeah, yeah. This thing is, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's not so bad because it is so bad. Yeah. But if you can get up and be like, this is not so bad, like, woohoo, 
No. Or at least, or at least to see some beauty. I, that's how. That's one of the ways I cope with it. Is just like, where's the beauty? And that, there's so I've studied a lot of Vedic stuff, and um, one of the lessons that keeps coming up for me, especially lately, is like, I think of a few things. Um, so Kali um, is one of my favorites. Um, because she's like the terrible goddess, right? Um, and um, the terrible goddess is always coming from love. She's not actually terrible. She's kind of like, that energy is this very special energy. Um, and um, one of my favorite stories is um, the demons were acting up. They were just out of control. And all the gods were just like, shit, we're gonna have to call her. We're gonna have to call her because we can't fix it, right? So they call her and she's like, <laughs> you know? and she's like having to talk with them, but they're not changing. And so she just levels the fucking field. She chops off all of their heads and she's like, cool, we're gonna start over. We're gonna start over because y'all, y'all can't control yourselves and you're fucking everything up. Um, and then you start over. Um, and it's like someone described. I've, I've been thinking about black holes a lot too. And I was like, we don't know what's on the other side of a black hole, um, which actually maybe isn't true. There's, there's a theory about, you know, the gravity is so great that it flattens everything when it goes through the um, funnel of the black hole or, or whatever. I might be saying this wrong. I'm not an astrophysicist, but like it essentially breaks it down to its most basic elements and mm -hmm. you can't control it. It's just like it takes everything and flattens it with the gravity and breaks it down to its most essential or like its most basic elements. And then you start over because those elements are going to do whatever they, they're going to do. And your consciousness doesn't have anything to do with it. So like, say, if you're a star and you get pulled into a black hole, it's going to be something different on the other end. And this is what my friend told me. He's like, oh, Kali's like a black hole. I'm like, no, no, Kali's a little different. And he explained that to me. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> whoa like that's really cool and then i think too the third part of that is um so it's the um the beauty the terribleness and the beauty and the beauty and the terribleness and um i think i got my first lesson in this from an artist and we were camping like um in my early early to mid 20s we were gonna go see nine inch nails i took a couple guys to go see nine inch nails um, because at the time I was, I just, I just wanted to go see Night of Snails at the Gorge. Um, and so, um, at the Gorge, you actually camp outside. Um, and so we spent a couple of days, I think, before, uh, the show. So we were nice and gritty and dusty by the time the show happened. That was awesome. Um, but the show was, was like my first big show. But anyway, one of the nights, um, my friend, um, an artist, I, I mean, I wish he was my friend. I always wanted him to be my friend. I admired him an awful lot, um, and his art was really spectacular. I don't think he does it anymore, which is really sad. But um, he had built a fire, and um, he had essentially built a structure inside of the fire. And everyone else was asleep. He had, he had, um, you know, he couldn't sleep. Um, and so I came came out, and I was watching this, and I'm like, "You're just creating art all the time." And it was this, it, it was entropy, right? The fire, the fire is just eating away the structure he made inside of the fire. And it was absolutely beautiful. And it was ephemeral. It was just this thing that happened that maybe no one would see. And he just created, created it just because he's always creating art. Mm -hmm. And um, we see that all the time, right? Like, like, um, sorry, my brain's doing the, I hope this is okay. My brain's being a pinball machine with teleportation stations. So I like, Right. I'm, I'm thinking about all these, um, the woods, I love the woods, and um, I love fireflies um, since I was a kid, and I love deer since I was a kid, and so for me, they're like these mythical creatures, right, and so I've placed them on a pedestal and think they're kind of like, you know, they're, they can never do wrong, they're just these beautiful creatures, like deer are vegetarians, and the fireflies just do what they do, they glow in their booties and then they die. Um, the thing is, both of them feed on the dead. Deer yeah. sometimes eat each other and fireflies are up in the dead flesh. And like, I remember when I learned those things, I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> what? And so like, there are these beautiful things, these beautiful things that exist in the world and it can't be taken out of the shit. Like, 
the, the shit is just impor as important as the booty glow. <laughs> the flesh is just as important as the booty glow. You know what I'm saying? Like you wouldn't have that without those things. And so like uh, Kali for me is, is, is definitely that. It's like the beauty and the terribleness and the terribleness and the beauty, like it's 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 all important and it's not like it's not to like like you know that spiritual bypass thing people do like oh just see the beauty in it i know i've been guilty of that too and and fairly recently unfortunately um and i realized it pretty quickly but wasn't able to remedy it but like if we can see the beauty i i, I feel like that for me, anyway, that's something that's saving me. Mm -hmm. um, or even the humor, um, mm -hmm. like crows surrounding a hawk and the hawk not knowing what to do <laughs> because the crows are really pestering them. That's one of my favorite things to watch because you think of the hawk as like kind of this all powerful predator, mm -hmm. but the crows mess with them so bad. And it's, it's really cool to see. I don't know, anyway, I think that's beautiful. I agree. I, I think you need to trademark booty glow. <laughs> I think that's your next <laughs> move. No, I'm in the wrong business. There's actually like um, booty buffing and booty masks for folks. Oh. Like just like a facial mask, but for your bum. Um, yeah, and booty glow would be a, be a good uh, name brand. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yes. Anyway. Um, do you want me to do the surprise? The surprise! <laughs> I would love the surprise. I would, I would absolutely love that. And I'm very excited about it. I was, I was trying to see if I should ask. So I'm glad you. <laughs> I think that, um, I said I was going to do that one, but I don't, I, I'm going to do one that, that has already been, been okay. presented. But, um. Okay. Do you want to preface it a little bit or you don't have to, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even say what I was doing. <laughs> um, okay. I'm going to read this uh, poem called, well, I titled it Laundry List, but a lot of my poem titles really don't have any meaning toward the poem. It's just, it was just a word that was in it, you know? Titles yeah. are hard. Like, titles are hard and... <laughs> I think and, I think that's a I, legit way of titling things. And well, I actually do sorry. I was just gonna say if I sat around thinking of a title for it, I would never share it. <laughs> 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 Truly. Um so okay. This one's called Laundry List, and I'm just gonna make sure that you can still see me, right? Yes. Okay. Atop the laundry list of things I thought I needed, perhaps the most futile was their approval. Perhaps the most irrelevant was their tight-lipped acknowledgement. Perhaps the most feckless was their recognition of the boulders I've hauled up mountains of racial discounting through choppy rapids of gaslighting. When I detail the microcosm of ways in which I've broken my bones just to fit into white supremacy's fascistly star-spangled box. White folks meet me with subtle indignance wrapped in a smile that disregards my plight and exchanges it for, girl, don't let the haters get you down. Something foreign enters my chest and squeezes so tightly you can hear glass shattering from the front yard and me screaming this. <laughs> Those haters have had a savage grip on my exoskeleton since before I cried into my hands, shielding my sandwich from grief of the hilarity my middle school lunch table found in the word nigger. Those Haters have had their fecal boots on the crook of my neck since before that white Wiccan boy stood up and roared that same 
teeth clenching word and said, go back to picking cotton for disagreeing with him in front of our speech class. When the haters realized I was smarter than them, they began making these dime-sized incisions in my hippocampus with each, you talk so white and you're not really black. The incisions doubled in potency and girth until I allowed all the well-meaning haters camouflaged as friends to transform my exoskeleton into a creature so porous I could no longer see myself. So transparent, I spent adolescence trying, thinking that I was invisible, working twice as hard, trying to prove to everyone but myself that I was good enough. As if enough was a tropical destination and not an adverb. Until I realized I had reached enough. The moment the doctors pulled me from my mother's womb and my newborn black ass caught a ray of sunshine until I realized I'd been loved since before conception, since the moment I was just a dream in my mother's head, since the point at which my ancestors said, hell no. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Um, so that was, honestly, it had a lot to do with what we were talking about earlier and, yeah. and the ways that we break ourselves down, um, so that we fit into this, really this white box, or at least it lacks color, it lacks, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, authenticity, it lacks anything that is not what they deem acceptable um and so i kind of messed up a, a line but uh and i can't stop thinking about it but it, it it goes back to what we were saying about not uh, about kind of losing our identity within right. that um and not not feeling like uh we were people um so yeah that's that's kind of been something I've been working on, and it's it's uh, <laughs> it's hard when like <laughs> I think that a lot of people think that I'm talking about them, and uh, all I can say to that is, if the shoe fits, maybe maybe you should find a mirror. Yeah, <laughs> we all get we all get to do this work. All of us, every single one of us, get to do this work because. The story is so insidious. It, we can't escape it. We've all been living it. So we all have to do our fair amount of, 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 of uh, acknowledgement and dismantling. And it's not fun. Yep. It is not fun. It is very uncomfortable. Yep. And um, so, yeah, I'm really, I'm really thankful for you and for you for doing this work. And um, just the uh, really cool uh, connection that's that's happened, um, and um, yeah, I, I I know I know that I've I've needed this for a really long time. Not not to make this about me, but like um, like these connections are important because it's really hard not to feel alone um, otherwise, no. especially when you know we're in these spaces that are not hospitable uh to us being in the world like for us to, to be in the world um and I, I don't at the moment have any more eloquent way of saying it than that um so yeah thank you for that and um letting me be here <laughs> ah, no it's not letting it's i yeah no the, i don't have the words for it but it's definitely not letting uh you belong here <laughs> you belong here and um yeah and, and with that like how can folks can support how can folks reach out to you and support the projects um, that you're starting and um or or 
it's it's more than starting like you're actually building them um how yeah. can I support you with um, that? so i don't have a facebook page for my work <laughs> right now i don't really want to be like just add me on facebook but um, <laughs> <laughs> i have um an email though if anybody wants to read if you don't have instagram and you want to reach out yeah. um, the words from within at gmail.com um that works and then on instagram that's pretty much where i've posted um most everything and i'm giving um updates about poetry florist um Which that i'm really cool. excited about i'm doing a giveaway this is probably not going to be, I don't think this is going to be posted before it ends. So, that, um, but uh, I'm going to be uh, offering that, that service soon. Like, come, I will write you a poem. Tell me about how much you love your friend or your significant other. And we will write a poem about it. And you can hang it up on your wall. <laughs> write a poem about it we will just discuss it and uh yeah and so on instagram it's the words from within underscore so yes i mean thank you yeah. for okay I, I won't say letting me this feels like a gift though so I, I feel like this is a gift too so um i started these things because um i mean i've worked a little bit in journalism i found the back door somehow um some folks asked me to write and there are some things that rub me the wrong way about journalism um and um i think sometimes we're not supposed to write about the folks who are close to us or the communities that we're in and yet my assignment was to write about the communities that i'm in um so it's really difficult to not have any associations with um those communities and then also something that happens when people find out you're doing like kind of journalistic writing is they want you to promote all their stuff and i don't want to promote everyone's stuff um partially because i don't have enough time um it's becoming more and more important to be involved in any way possible in the kinds of conversations that um i want to be in and 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 those are the conversations that um you know, selfishly helping me to grow and also like moving towards the answers that I'm seeking. Like, I want to know if those answers are out there. And if they're not, I want to figure out how to contribute to the question so that the answer can be heard at some point. Um, so that's what I'm looking for. And that's become very important to me. So this is a gift too. Thank you for sharing your time. And um, yeah, I, I know we'll talk a lot more. Um, and I'm really excited about that. Me too. All right, I'm gonna close this up.